Okay, now we need to see if the programmer is actually connected correctly to the computer. Uh, once we connect it and the computer recognizes it and is able to communicate to the programmer. So go ahead and connect it and then connect it to the computer. You should see the two lights light up. You can also connect the SPI cable. Make sure it is in the right orientation. Okay, and then take the, the six pin, plug it into the interface that we made, and then plug it from pins six through 11. If you're using this programmer, you just plug this part into the computer and use the six pin connector. Okay, so the first thing we want to do to test the programmer is we're going to use a program called AVR Dude, which is the actual program that, that is going to send the files to the microcontroller when we program it. So go to your start menu and type in cmd.exe. This takes you to a DOS prompt or DOS command prompt. You don't need to know this command, but I'm going to clear the screen. And go to the root directory, which is cd backslash. You don't really need to do this. I'm just doing this to make it easier for you to see. Okay. The command is avrdude. First, it's good to know what avrdude can do, so I'm going to show you the help file. You can see that by typing avrdude-help. And you'll see all the command line options. We're going to be uh, using the lowercase c for the programmer. It's going to specify the programmer type and the one we're using is USB tiny. Uh, we'll also use the parameter lowercase p for part number and that will be our AVR device. We're using the AT Mega 32 and the correct association for that is M32. So let's go ahead and do it. AVR dude space dash c US, USB tiny dash P space M32. So here we have specified AVR dude, which is the executable file that will communicate to the programmer. We use dash C to specify what type of programmer we have, and that's the USB tiny. And we have dash P. These are all, by the way, these are all lowercase. This is um, case sensitive is there are parameters that take the uppercase that mean something completely different. So this is dash P, lowercase. M32 is our microcontroller type. Press enter. Looks like we were able to do it successfully. The AVR device is initialized and ready to accept instructions. It was able to uh, do a reading. It took 0.03 seconds. Um, it was able to determine the device signature, which is the the microcontroller. Uh, the fuses are okay, and then it didn't give us any errors. This gives us the green light to go ahead and program the chip. So, so we know our programmer is working. We need to actually write a program now. We will write a program so we can see if the program gets transferred to the microcontroller. I'm going to write a small program. We are going to take an LED which is this green little device. An LED is a light emitting diode. We're going to take one of these pins from the microcontroller. I'm going to take this pin here, which is in port B, and it is pin number zero. Port B consists of this pin, this pin, this pin, this one, this one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So port B consists of that many pins from zero to seven, the first eight pins. Now we'll take the port B at pin zero. We're going to use that one to light up the LED. And the LED needs power to light up. I'm going to draw a symbol for the for the LED. 
on this side is the plus and on this side is the minus. So what we need to do is we need to plug in the LED on the minus side, plug it into port B at pin 0. Okay? And we also have to get power somewhere. And the power is going to come from the computer with our programmer. Our programmer supplies power. Generally we won't be providing power from the computer. We'll be providing power from either the the wall outlet with a, a wall adapter or you'll be using batteries to to power the chip. But right now our programmer has power in it. It has the power through VCC and ground. So we'll be using those two pins. VCC is on 10, on pin 10, so count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And ground is right next to it on pin 11. So we'll just put a little plus there. And then ground is minus. So what we need to do is wire this LED from this pin to this pin on the negative side. The VCC will already have power, so since the chip is getting power, it will be able to provide power on this pin when we tell it to. To determine the, the plus side and the minus side of the LED, um, you can go by looking at the, the leads that are on the LED. LEDs have two leads and one lead will be longer than the other when you purchase it and the longer lead will be the plus side. The shorter lead will be on the minus side. So let's say this one was the shorter side. This would be the minus. This, if this is a longer lead it would be the, the plus. There's another way to tell. Some LEDs come with a flat side to the LED. On this one it's on this side and if you see the flat on the side of a particular lead, that lead will be negative. So on this one, the flat is here, this lead is a negative, and this lead is positive. This is the anode, and this is the cathode. If the LED doesn't have a flat, then you're going to have to rely on the length of the leads. This is a green LED. Green and blue and white and other colors, they have a different current ratings and limits. Uh, if I just directly connected it to VCC, this, this LED, it would uh, most likely burn out pretty quickly because it's getting too much current is passing through this LED. So what we need to do is add a what is called a resistor, and a resistor resists current. We need to limit the current that is coming through the LED, and we'll add a resistor at that location. Now how do you find the resistance that you need? We're going to be using Ohm's law to figure that out. This is a green LED and it has a 2 volt rating and it also has a 10 milliamp current rating. The resistance is equal to volts over current. In this particular case it's going to be a delta voltage. Volts from the source which is the battery or whatever is feeding the, the system and then we're going to subtract that with the volts of the LED and then we're going to divide that by the current. Okay so the volts is 5 volts that's coming through the system minus the 2 volts for the LED and that's going to be in amps it's going to be 0 0.01 amps which is 10 milliamps Okay, so resistance equals 3 divided by 0 0.01, which is equal to 300. 330 is a common number for ohms. Generally, 300 isn't made, and 330 is. You can also use something higher than this. You don't have to use 330. You can use a higher resistance. The only problem is the LED will become more dim as you go higher in, in, in resistance. So now we need to build the circuit that will resemble the drawing that we made earlier. The first thing is from the port B, pin 0, we're going to put a wire at that location. All of these points in a line are tied together. 
and they're all connected. Now we're going to take this to an empty area, to this point. Okay, secure. So what I need to do now is, because the LED needs a resistor, I'm going to put a resistor, one end, one side of it here, and then the other side will be at the next tie strip. So we're going to put the 330 ohm resistor. Okay, so we have a connection from the wire that's going to pin 1 or the port B pin 0 to a resistor. And then the other end of the resistor is on this area. So we can put our positive side of our LED on that tie strip, which is right here. And then the other side of the LED, which is ground, I'm going to put it to this ground tie strip. This tie strip from negative here, the entire strip along the board is all tied together. So, so when you plug in your power supply, you would plug in your negative here and your positive here, and those entire strips would have positive, and this entire strip would have negative. In this case, we are getting the power from our programmer this is the ground or negative and this is our positive because we don't need the positive in this strip we're lighting it up when we apply voltage to this pin but we do need to get a negative the ground to this strip so we need to put a wire from the ground on the pin to this strip and the ground is pin 11 and we'll just go we'll just take it to this negative strip. So this completes our circuit and now we can start programming.